everybody and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Educational Webinar. Today we have Mr. Glenn Bill and it's all about purchase business. Again, Glenn Bill is a top realtor. He's owned real estate companies. He sells real estate. Uh, he coaches and mentors realtors and loan officers and it's going to be great to hear his perspective on how to get more business. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. Many of you on this call today are Mortgage Coach members, so for all you family members and Mortgage Coach members, welcome. It's great to have you. For anybody who's not part of Mortgage Coach, I want to urge you to at least at a minimum connect with us on Facebook. Also, you know, most of my social activity in LinkedIn and Facebook is business related, so if you're a mortgage professional and you're on this call, you're my friend. Connect with us. Uh, again, as I said, Today is all about purchase business. While we're in the middle of a, a refi tidal wave, there's still a tremendous amount of purchase opportunity, and we all know that's where the long-term opportunity is. Rates will start going up. Purchase business will get stronger. At some point, refi business is going to get weaker, so we need to sharpen our swords. We need to be focused on how do we get more purchase business. So with that said, I, I, had, I saw Glenn Bill speak at uh, Fairway Independence National Sales Rally. So just the fact that he was asked to be a presenter there, you know, something to respect. The fact that I noticed that he was a certified Jeffrey Gittimer speaker, not something easy to do. Jeffrey has very high standards, means he's a great teacher, great speaker, and I was just blown away with his message, not only the quality of the content, but the quality of the delivery. Brought him into a coaching call, you know, at Mortgage Coach. Every week we have our weekly sales meeting, and he was just awesome. So I thought, what a great opportunity to bring and introduce Glenn Bell to the greater mortgage community. There's a picture of him wowing a live group, so he's not going to get quite the opportunity to use all of his skills of influence and entertainment. But, again, sit back for a great show. We are hoping to have some Q&A by the end of this call. But with that said, there will be opportunities to raise your hand. When that happens, raise your hand. We'll let you know that. In the meantime, Glenn Bill, I'm going to pass the mic to you. I'm going to pass the screen to you. And you know, from a realtor's perspective, tell us how we, as a mortgage industry, can get more business from your real estate agents. All right. Well, thanks so much, and it's great to be able to uh, speak to you all. And um, thank you for having me. And today we are going to focus on uh, how to become irresistible to real estate agents. And I just, you know, first of all, I want to say I love loan originators. Uh, I love the mortgage business, and I certainly understand what goes on and the challenges you have by not wanting to smack realtors in the faces at times in your life. Um, I'm, I'm aware and I understand that realtors don't understand the length and the, the complexities of the loans anymore. And uh, you don't necessarily get the opportunities to explain it because they don't want to listen to you. I understand that loyalty is at an all-time low in the, in the mortgage business. And um, with, you know, the advent of Internet marketing, it's, it's tough to really put your arms around a realtor and feel like they're loyal to you. Uh, you know, the, the old saying is you're only as good as your last deal. I mean, my gosh, I've seen loan originators do some great things for our agents. You know, 10, 11, 12 loans, then boom, they have one band, bad transaction and the loyalty's gone and they're off to the next guy. Uh, so, you know, I understand the challenges that, that loan originators have uh, with real estate agents, especially just the other day I saw a real estate agent, you know, the buyer locked a loan and the real estate agent's uh, showing their buyer other uh, rate sheets and they're calling the LO saying, hey, I got this rate sheet and the rate's lower than what you locked at. And I tried to explain to the agent, I said, that, you know, that's like you going on a listing presentation and your LO saying, uh, why don't you choose another real estate company because they charge less commission? I mean, you know, that just, that just wouldn't happen. So one thing that I really am trying to push is to help realtor LO relationships. I'm really trying to help realtors understand the, the challenges that uh, we present 
to to uh, loan originators. So with that said, hopefully some of these ideas will be good, but I just certainly want to come to you as a person of empathy and a person that understands what you guys do is tough. And I know because I was a broker with 150 agents, some of the toughest customers to ever work with in the world uh, are myself and my peers. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, slide number one. And I just want to ask you this, you know, is it possible to do twice as much business in the same amount of time for the rest of the year? I don't know how many purchase orders or purchases you've written this year, but is it possible to do twice as many? Uh, hopefully after you get done hearing me, you're going to feel like, you know what, yeah, it is. I'm going to give you four strategies on how to create that relationship, build that loyalty, and hopefully up your realtor referral business. I want to first of all talk about the death of the cold call. Uh, I get this a little bit with Jeffrey Gittimer, but uh, so many mortgage coaches are out there telling you cold call, go cold call, go cold call, just pound the pavement and you'll get your deals. And although that's true, the bottom line is only 2% are going to want to do business with you. There's a 98% rejection rate. When you're out there cold calling, I'm a, I'm a productive real estate agent. You're interrupting me usually 100% of the time. And 100% of the time, I already know you're selling. And so I don't really want to be sold. I don't have time to be sold as an agent. I can, I can assure you that when you go to cold call and you pop your head in that office, you're making a real estate agent feel uncomfortable and you're making them feel manipulated into giving you a deal. There's just a 100% lack of personal preparation about the customer. Uh, you know, it's tougher to get into real estate offices because they have in-house lenders, but the bottom line is it's, it, it's always amazed me that somebody could just come in cold and expect to get my business as a top producing agent. Uh, but most of all, I think about the loan originator. If you're being told to go out and cold call, cold call, cold call, you know, rejection is the biggest cause of sales turnover. It's the biggest demotivator of a salesperson. And I'm here to tell you that if you believe in cold calling, it works for you and you love it, there's about 1% of people that are crazy enough to do it. That's how I built my business. Uh, in order for you to maybe enjoy your uh, career more and to get more fulfillment out of the loan origination business, there's a better way to go about trying to get realtor business. Uh, here's a hint. In order for you to attract realtor business, you must first become more attractive, or you must first just simply be attractive. Not physically, but as a person or as a partner. I always like to say, do you have a business relationship with your agents, or do you have a trusted advisor relationship with your agents? Understand this. It's not your loan programs that make you attractive. It's you that make you attractive. Uh, so many agents want to sit and talk to me about the loan programs and the interest rates. And the bottom line is, as a top producing agent and broker, I don't really care about the programs. I care about you, number one. But more importantly, I don't want to know about your loan programs. I want to know how your loan programs can help me list and sell more properties. And certainly there are loan programs out there, and those of you on the call, that have really good programs that can help people list property, uh, especially those that are involved you know, in the 203K market and however you package home improvement loans. Uh, great way to help agents list. The problem is, is how do I get an agent to listen to, um, to, to listen to me on how my programs can help them sell more homes? So I think this is very important. Just don't puke all over us on what your programs are, but tell us how can we implement and what's the how-to or what's the language that we might be able to use with people to, to leverage those programs to do more business. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that later. So let's talk about strategy number one. You know, I've always believed that it's all about attitude. Attitude is simply... Becoming what you think about all day long. And so my question is this. What do you think about all day long? I know a lot of our agents think about all day long, but uh, 
it's not necessarily about developing the relationships we need. But I think, you know, I can't pause, but in, a, in our live seminars when I'll do this, you know, I really want people to just jot down, you know, what is the focus of my day? What is the focus of my life? And what am I really thinking about? What is in my head? Because, you know, attitude is contagious. And if you are thinking about things that are uh, not in line with success or not in line with becoming an advisor or not in line with, you know, who you want to be or how you want to become a fulfilled loan originator, you're not going to be attractive and you will not be contagious. The bottom line is, is that, you know, attitude does provide real value to an agent and it makes you attractive. When I owned our large offices, we'd have loan originators come in and I would walk past the cubicles and listen to the conversation. And I'm not sure, you know, gossip is, gossip is just trash and it doesn't help anybody. And I can assure you, if you're a loan originator in my office and your attitude was negative and the conversation I overheard was negative, uh, you got carried out of our building because I don't want anybody spreading bad attitudes to our people. So here's the big question, and be honest, how's your attitude? Uh, the number one most important facet of sales, the number one thing I look for, and I know brokers all over the nation look for, I always ask people, you know, in a salesperson, what's the most important thing? And the bottom line is, you know, I think it's hard to admit that it, it's, it's not attitude. Attitude is. It, it's the number one thing. And if you want to work on getting a better attitude or to analyze your attitude or to understand how to get a better attitude, I would recommend Jeffrey Gittimer's little gold book of Yes Attitude. Uh, really helps you understand that Creating a positive or a good attitude or an attractive attitude, it happens every day. If attitude is the most important part of sales, my question is this. What if you just spent as much time uh, focusing and growing and uh, improving your attitude as you did on your loan programs, how much more attractive would you be to real estate agents? You ever seen a realtor like this or a customer like this? Uh, not a good attitude. I always picture this gal, you know, why didn't you give me that loan? You know, because your attitude stinks. All right. So when it comes to doubling your realtor referral business, what or how is your attitude? You know, I threw that out there. I said, who wants to double your referral business? Instantaneously in your body, in your gut, you had an attitude about that. Whether it was positive, negative, it could be a, that I was excited. It could be that I felt hopeless. There's no way I could double my realtor business. Well, I'm here today to give you a few thoughts and a few strategies that will help you to do that. You know, the bottom line is it's, it's all how you look at things. You know, real estate agents uh, and loan originators, I think, look at things differently. And I think um, real estate agents look at loan originators as business partners. And I think loan originators look at real estate agents as business partners, and that's not the healthy way to look at it. That's the old woman that's looking down. But if they start looking at each other more as uh, business advocates, as partnerships, as advisors, you're going to see that pretty lady over the right shoulder. So how are you looking at your attitude? How are you looking at real estate agents? What's your feel on that? The bottom line is there's always two ways to look at anything, and we hope you choose the beauty and the relationship. More importantly, you know, what are you doing about it? You know, if, if you do have a bad attitude, what are you doing about your attitude towards real estate agents? What are you doing about a prospecting plan to engage real estate agents to give you more business? I'll give you two words that's not even on here. It's about education and entertainment. If you're a loan originator and you want, and I've seen this locally in our market, we have a young man uh, fairly new in the business. He's a He's a, probably about a 30-year-old loan originator, and he's getting anywhere from 10 to 15 um, apps a month uh, by educating and entertaining. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, in our strategies uh, forthcoming. But what are you doing about it? That's the question. How are you defining your attitude, or how do you, how do you define attitude? Uh, usually I go around the room and, ask people to help me understand how they define attitude. 
But since we're on a webinar, I'm not going to do that. But hopefully you've taken just a second to say, gosh, how, how, I don't know, how do you define it? How do you find attitude? I'm going to give you the definition. It's the way you dedicate yourself to the way you think. And as I said previous, you know, you've got to focus on having a good attitude about interest rates, about your customers, about real estate, about compliance. You have to dedicate yourself to the way you think about the business that you're in. If you don't, there are plenty of people that will turn you upside down, run you out, make you unattractive, and make you not re non-referable. Uh, again, it's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens to you. And, uh, you know, here's what's happened to us, right? We're in an incredible refi boom. That's what's happening. And the point is, is your eye off the prize? Uh, what are you doing with that? Are you maximizing your refi business and banking as much money as you can? Or are you maximizing realtor relationships because there's less competition talking to real estate agents now than ever before? I can promise you this. <laughs> I have not been prospected by very many mortgage people or loan originators because the bottom line is they're all too busy doing refis. So what are you going to do and what are you going to do with what happens to you? Yeah, compliance is tough. So how do I solve that? You know, what are you going to do? Well, I think you have to have better upfront conversations with agents and with their customers and your customers on, you know, it's harder to get a loan done and it takes a little more time. and. Here's the things that can happen. So upfront presentations can be really big. I like to call it resilience. And you know, the question is, is how resilient am I? When uh, the borrower doesn't get uh, the necessary docs in and the realtor chews me up, how resilient am I? When my underwriter or processor doesn't uh, meet their deadline and it makes me look bad, how resilient am I? Uh, there's things that go wrong, a lot of things that go wrong in your business. And the question is, is the most resilient LO is going to be the one that wins? Uh, the person I consider to be one of the most resilient people I've ever been fortunate enough to know, and I've worked with a lot of people who've worked with Mother Teresa, is Mother Teresa. Um, I'm not going to go in because I don't have the time with any stories, but I would encourage you to go ahead and Google her, look at some of her quotes, and I think you'll see with what she dealt with and how she views, views the world and views service and views people uh, will give you a good idea or help you get a better understanding of how to become attractive to others. Resilience and attitude is what it's all about. It's all about resilience and attitude, and it's all about you on the inside. It has nothing to do with you on the outside, but the question is, who am I on the inside, and what am I going to do to improve? So let's talk about just quickly three skills for resilience. A lot of you guys may go, God, you know, I'm not really resilient. and I don't know how to become more resilient. So I got three thoughts. Number one, understand that the real estate agent and credit score may be lower than yours. Okay, you are going out and you're trying to engage real estate agents and you're not being probably treated really well by a lot of them. You're being ignored. You're being shunned. And the truth of the matter is the average income for a real estate agent, according to NAR, is $23,000 a year. So what's the point? Here's the point. Real estate agents are great or acting like, like they got more money than they have. The bottom line is the average of them are making about what somebody's making at McDonald's. So one key to resilience is understand your customer is probably not making money and they're probably not treating you the way you want to be treated because uh, their credit's in the toilet and they're having just as much trouble with their mortgage, with their car and mortgage payment as anybody else in, in the market. Under also understand this for resilience. I do believe that you need to contact people. I don't believe you need to cold call them. I, need, I do believe you need to educate and entertain them. Uh, and, you know, a plug for Mortgage Coach there. Mortgage Coach has a tool that allows you to do that through video, which I think is fabulous. And every no you hear is proof that you're performing the right actions and practicing the right habits. I always like to talk about our real estate agents that came in and go, oh, you know, I've never lost a listing this month. And I said, 
never lost a listing because you never went on a listing this month. So I just want to encourage you all to embrace the word no and to, to hopefully get as many no's as you can out of real estate agents. Uh, I can tell you that most real estate agents, in my opinion, are easily sold if you just have resilience and if you persevere and if you keep coming back and you keep offering value. Very tough for a real estate agent to say no more than one or two times because you know what? We're salespeople. We're, we're e more easily sold than anybody else. So make sure that you are doing your numbers. Make sure you are doing your contacts. The third key for resilience is understand, hey, this is your job. If you want to go be in a business um, that doesn't require rejection, that doesn't require good attitudes, then, you know, change your job. But you're in the field uh, that requires you to have resilience, that requires you to have a great attitude that uh, requires you to hear no, that requires you to uh, deal in conflict. And uh, the bottom line is it's your job, so just accept it. And uh, sometimes that can make you more resilient. It's what you've chosen. Strategy number two, stop begging. Stop asking for referrals and start earning referrals. Jeffrey always likes to say, when's the best time to ask for a referral? The answer is never. If you're really, really great at what you do, if you bring value in a transaction to the real estate agent and or their customer, trust me, you will be earning referrals and it will not require you to ask for referrals. I know that just made some people gasp. But let's stop begging, let's stop asking, let's start earning. This, this is a photo of what most loan originators look like when they come to my office or when they see me out. Can you please give me another deal, right? You know, I'm just begging, right? It's unattractive. Here's some lame attempts at trying to get my business. You know, it's crazy. Um, I've never met this person. He may be on the call. Uh, Glenn, I got your profile on LinkedIn. I know you've been and have lending sources. One thing I don't get is why does every loan originator that prospects a real estate agent always start their sales pitch with, hey, I know you have other lenders. Okay, I don't need to know that I have other lenders, and you don't need to say it. And it's just opening up for me to say, yeah, you're right, I have other lenders, so I don't need you. You would welcome an opportunity to outline what AMC could do to help me build my real estate business. Let me, let me just tell you this, and we're going to talk about three types of real estate agents. If I'm a top producing real estate agent that's cranking, let's call it 60 transactions or more a year, that's five closings a month, I don't need a loan originator who's never sold a house or uh, shown a buyer on nights, weekends, and you know neglected their families to help me build my business. Although I appreciate what the intent is, but I've found that real estate agents tend to get aggravated when loan originators try to tell them how to do business. Just like you may be aggravated that I'm a real estate agent trying to tell you how to do your business, which isn't my intent. I would be happy to meet you at your office wherever is convenient. Thank you so much. I think that's a lame attempt. Now, I've never met this guy. Do you think I just emailed him back and said, great, uh, that letter's engaging. That makes me feel significant, and let's go do business, right? That's the guy that sent it to me. That's not really the guy, but I think you get the idea. There are LOs out there that got that persona. This is a good one. This is a really good <laughs> one. Hi, Glenn. Are you showing homes this weekend? Like it's any of your business. I don't even know you. Uh, please have your buyers call me at 547-3199 for a pre-approval. Honestly, uh, meanwhile, here's a good article to pass on to your sellers. So, like, here's a guy I've never met that's asking me if I'm showing or not. And he just thinks out of the blue, I'm just going to go ahead and send him a customer for a pre-approval. This is your competition. This is what's going on. These are real, live, um, you know, overtures to me to get my business. This wasn't a fairway rep. This is an old slide from fairway, just so you know. Meanwhile, here's a good article to pass along to your sellers. Like, I'm going to call my sellers and say, hey, guys, I got an article from a loan originator I never met. 
but we thought you might like this. Very lame attempt, not going to get my business. This is another good one. I love this. Hey, Glenn, I'm so happy that it's spring. Well, that makes me feel great. Uh, it's a great time of year. Weather's warmer. People are outside having fun. The trees begin to bud. I mean, I am feeling great. I'm feeling engaged at this point. I hope your spring is as good as mine. Don't forget, realtors don't make any money. Chances are their spring isn't as good as theirs. They're, they're working all the time. They're not getting to spend time with their family. They're, they're, I've already pissed off at this. As always, feel free to call me about your mortgage or cash needs. I am here to help. I don't know this person, but I do feel free to call them. Not. Have a wonderful spring. Your relationship really means a lot to me. What relationship? There is none. But it's like, I don't know, you guys are buying uh, mail order programs or stuff that, uh, you know, it, it's not developing relationships. Uh, you know, purchasing a... Uh, email, drip email campaign is not going to get your realtor business. Uh, I don't sell email campaigns to get realtor business. I sell live events. And I get you belly to belly with agents. That's what I try to do. Here's a great attempt. Uh, Jeremy Milheiser from uh, Fairway. He has a video program. Now, I can't play the video uh, because I'm technologically not that good. But this is a loan originator that is now educating me. He is now entertaining me, and he is offering me real value uh, and helping me list better pro list property better and do better properties. Talking about is the HOA under litigation. This is a great little video. Uh, Jeremy's a uh, public speaker as well, and a one hell of an originator. And uh, you know what? I listened to that. I got value out of that, and that's the difference. That's the great attempt. So, you know, the bottom line is when we talk about mortgage coach and to implement what services they have, you know, they do some really great things. I was on the call with Jeremy yesterday, and his video proposals and his ability to link that video proposal to a real estate agent, uh, especially after the uh, agent has you know, referred that customer, or maybe that customer was referred to them a, a month or two ago, he becomes hot again because of a video that was sent, and that video gets reintroduced to the realtor. I mean, that's just a crazy, crazy way for you guys to add value and to uh, get more business. So I just want to give a little plug to Mortgage Coach. You know, the total cost analysis that they do going over the savings on five and ten years, on different types of mortgage programs. Uh, this is a real, real sweet educational tool for uh, our customers that lets them know, hey, our mortgage people are looking out for your best possible uh, options and, and looking at that. I mean, this is basically what, you know, I don't know, 70, 80, 90 percent of how people are working uh, buyers through pre-approvals and the loan app process. And it's like, you know, do you want a pro? And people using the uh, uh, mortgage coaches tools, or do you want guys working off of a off of a pad? Uh, here's my question: the one word definition of referral. I don't know. I don't think we have a live link to type it in, do we? Dave, are you on? Can you hear? I don't think so. All right. Well, anyway, I'm here, and no, we do. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't have a live okay. link. Well, usually in this, I go. Oh, around you, the you room. know, they could. Hey, by the way, everybody, you could. Where you post questions, though, they could put in some stuff there. So, where it has a little question area, if you want everybody to do a shout out, they could do it there. That's cool. Well, for the sake of time, I got to keep moving. But there is one word. It's a one-word definition of referral. And um, nobody ever gets it right when I'm in my live audiences. And real estate agents alike and NLOs are terrible at this answer. But there is one word that defines referral. And I got this from my guy, again, uh, Jeffrey Gittimer. I, I encourage you to all go to buygittimer.com, sign up for his e-zine. He is all about um, trusted advisor value uh, and uh, creating the right attitude in a sales situation. So uh, write down that website and go check him out. He is the king of sales at this point. But the definition, guys, the one-word definition of referral is risk. 
it is risk. And do you know how risky it is for a real estate agent, or do you feel it, or do you understand it, how risky it is for us to risk our relationships uh, on a loan originator? We are not going to send people that we've spent, let's call it two months and 20 hours with, on, again, nights and weekends from our family. We're, we're not going to refer somebody that sends me a drip email campaign or somebody that begs for business at my door, or somebody that cold calls me and interrupts me. It's just not going to happen. So we are going to refer to somebody that has a trust advisor capacity, somebody that's constantly enhancing my business. I actually had an LO say to me, um, hey, you know what? You refer me business, and I'll refer you business. And I told the LO, well, guess what? But we won't be doing business because I don't work on a contingency basis. I mean, that pissed me off. That's a lame attempt. I don't know if you do that. But I generate my own leads. I don't need LOs to give me leads. I think it's great. I think it's nice to offer, but I don't think you make it contingent. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But the bottom line is if you expect referral business, you need to understand the risk of the relationship. That's how a lot of people feel once they refer somebody that is um, loan originator number one who doesn't really understand that. Relationships remove the risk. And I'm going to talk to you about how to build some of those relationships. Every time you ask for a referral, it is awkward for you and the customer. Again, you know, when you say, Glenn or any real estate, Mr. or Mrs. Real Estate Agent, I really appreciate your referrals. I mean, that's a nice way to ask, and I get it. But maybe you've done a not-so-good job, and maybe I don't want to give you referrals. It's awkward. Okay? You either earn them or you don't earn them. I mean, that's awkward, right? That's just kind of awkward. I think that's awkward. I always say the, the gal in the uh, pink dress is like the refi business, and there's two loan originators just chasing that refi business, not thinking about that realtor business. So these are the questions you should be asking. How referable am I? What have I done to earn a referral? Do I interview my agent's customers and ask about their experience? Just, just a thought. When they're done with the loan, you know, or an agent has referred you business, you close the loan, you find the, real, you find the customer, and you say, hey, I'd like to interview you about your agent's service, and the agent gives that real estate agent a glowing remark on film, you know, are you recording it? Are you encouraging that agent to let you post it on their Facebook and YouTube page? You know, as an agent, if a loan originator videoed my clients and my client said I was great and then they posted it on YouTube, Facebook for me, a commercial for me, I'm probably going to refer that loan originator another transaction. So are you meeting with other agents and asking them why they refer loan originators? And, and, and again, by the use of you know, smartphones, hell, you can do it right on your smartphone and upload it right from a smartphone on that interview. That, that's killer. Uh, so are you meeting with other agents and asking them why they refer loan originators? I think that's important. I asked one today. You know what she said to me? She said, Glenn, communication. Will they call me back right away? Uh, everybody knows realtors are not patient. <laughs> and I would, and I know that it's, an, it's hard, and I run into it too, but um, a deal can be lost in a 10-minute uh, return phone call. Uh, and, and it's the same way for Internet leads for real estate agents. We get leads, and if, you know, we, we find that I think the average return time was, I don't know, 27 hours to return an Internet lead. We return Internet leads on our team within five minutes. And if we don't do it, we expect to lose the business. So I would, I would strongly encourage you to figure out a way that you can immediately respond to people when they call you, especially on nights and weekends. Look, at 9 to 5 is done. 24-7, that's the new 9 to 5. So the bottom line is this requires hard work. And agents and loan originators alike will not do the hard work that makes sales easy. And that's just the way it is. We're, uh, let's kill the meat and let's go on to the next one. We want more, we want more, we want more. And when you talk about positioning yourself for the comeback, which is the title of our speech here, 
Um, you know, it's the hard work that creates the referral business that grows the wheel. To become referable, you must lower your customer's risk and increase your value, your skills, your effort, and your solutions. Um, that's the bottom line. It's all about making a real estate agent feel like, you know what, it's not a risk to put these guys in our hands. People ask me, Glenn, what do you want out of your loan originator? Let me tell you, the guys I use the most never talk to me. They do a great job with my client, make my client feel like I'm great. But, I, you know, I want 21-day loan approvals, period. And so that's, you know, that helps me sell more real estate. That helps me win competitive offers. That's what I want. So I know that's impossible for a lot of people on here. Strategy three, this gets back to what we were talking about. You know, you got to give to give. You know, don't give to get. This gets back to the LO that said, I'll give you business if you give me business. I mean, that's just gross. I, I just, I couldn't believe that. Be the type of person that gives to give. Don't give to get and provide real value. You do that, you're going to be owning real estate agents because I don't think there's a lot of guys out there or girls out there doing that. Again, I try not to harp on Mother Teresa, but I just love this quote. There should be less talk. Take a broom and clean someone else's house. That should be enough. So, um, you know, the point is let's stop all the chatter. Let's start doing the hard work. And you know what? The hard work will speak for itself. You can outwork uh, by, you can outwork your com competition in this arena by simply being there for your agents, and I'm going to give you a bunch, a bunch of stuff you can do to outwork them that nobody else is doing coming up. But sometimes, man, you just need to pick up the broom, don't say a word, and get the work done. And uh, you're going to find real estate agents becoming really, really loyal to you. I love that saying. So let's talk about value delivery on the four types of agents. Number one, we have, well, there's four types of agents, the big producer, the producer, and the beginning agent. And for time, I'm not going to talk about the diseased agents. But I, I will run through that quickly at the end. But the bottom line is quit doing business with real estate agents who suck and who are mean-spirited and who treat you with no respect. I mean, just get them off. They're usually going to be low producers anyway. But let's talk about how to, how to deliver value for a big producer. And when we talk about building the relationship or connecting with them, every, everybody does what they do because of what's called an emotional need. And I, I have a whole speech on emotional needs, which I can't give you today. But the, the point is what I want you to focus on when you're talking to a big producer, and I call a big producer 48 transactions or more. It's somebody that's doing, you know, four homes a month. You want to focus your conversations on making them significant and building their egos. Their egos are already huge, but you want to tap into their huge egos. They will like you more. Ask the question, how can I make them more significant in the marketplace? When you approach a big producer, don't ask them how I can help you build your business. I mean, yeah, that's good, but I'm telling you, not really attractive. But if you start talking to big producers about how can I get you more exposure in the marketplace, they're going to listen. Here's a couple things you can do to figure that out. Investigate their social media profiles and maybe help them upgrade those. Deliver memorable service. And when I mean memorable service, what I'm talking about is, uh, you know, phone calls back within a minute. I mean, you got to make top producers feel like there is no other customer. And you do that, they'll never leave you. Uh, we're doing about 100 homes a year. Uh, I have high expectations for my loan originators. Um, I love my loan originators. But they know uh, I expect to be called right away. And, and I also make the reverse promise to them, if they need me, I will call them right away. I'm always in touch. That's what memorable service is. Ask them to chair a panel. Get them, get them on the news. Start networking with news coverages, newspapers, and local periodicals, and get them some press. Because they want to be significant and they want your ego. Increase their followers and fans on Facebook. I mean, everybody wants more followers and fans. Introduce them to other big shots. There are people in the community. There are groups in the community. They're very successful networking groups. You want to try to help put them in touch with those other big shots. 
the bottom line is big producers, you got to crack that egg slowly. It's like, you know, chiseling a rock, you beat it, you beat it, you beat it, and then all of a sudden, boom, it breaks. Uh, one thing is to host or sponsor an event and make them a panelist or a participant or an honored guest at the big event, possibly a GB Unlimited event. Uh, again, not to promote what I do, but what I do is I go around to markets around the nation and I provide um, sales rallies or sales content for real estate agents. And uh, at those events, I customize each one of them with my loan originator partners or brokers. And um, we try to get 100 to 200 real estate agents in our seminars, and we try to promote you, the loan originator, as giving these people um, you know, this content, this education, this entertainment. And if you have a couple big producers that you like, what we do at our lunchtime is we have our big producer panel. You put those four guys up or the four gals up, and you let newer agents talk to them and ask them questions. They feel honored. They feel significant. You're stroking their ego at one of our events. And you know what? They're going to give you business, I promise. And I can, um, I can promise you this. I got, uh, I got LOs that will tell you that it works. Value delivery for a producer. These agents are doing anywhere from, let's call it 24, maybe 16 to 48 deals, right? 16 to 48 is what I would call a producer. You want to focus on love and connection and contribution with them, okay? You want to contribute to their business, and you want to connect with them. You want to love them. Ask yourself the question, how can I help you connect with your customers? The biggest problem this group of agents has is contact management system. It's uh, contact value delivery to their existing client base. You can help them with that. That's huge. Or how can I increase your business development skills? Maybe it's not um, real estate skills, but how can I help you become a better CFO of the company, not a sales and marketing guy, if that makes sense? Here's some way to deliver it. Get them more likes and followers in social media. Support their open house efforts. These are the agents that are out in the trenches on weekends, and there are ways that you can support their open house efforts by creating, you know, an open house system that helps them. Be available all the time. They, these guys and gals are out working all hours of the night trying to put their deals together to become a big shot. You've got to be available to them, and, and I, I believe these are the most loyal people. Save the day by knowing more. Um, a lot of times these people can't figure out how to make a transaction. One of the most valuable things loan originators can do is look at a transaction that a realtor can't figure out numbers-wise and say, I can figure it out. I mean, through the use of buy-downs, through the use of, you know, 723s, 525s, 15% uh, down, no PMIs, uh, PMI up front. I mean, this, you guys can be heroes with this. And this is the stuff realtors would want to hear, but it's got to be in the right context, presented the right way. Get them one LinkedIn contact they benefit from. Really try to link these people to your connections that help benefit them. And do joint events with them. Did I mention that we do events? Host or sponsor an event. Create a mastermind group from this event and facilitate business growth ideas. So again, uh, at our events, you know, what we might do is we, we'd have our big event, but you would want to identify what you would call a producing agent, and you would then follow up. You might pick 10 or 15 agents that you would want to create a mastermind group out of that. I show you how to sell it. And then, boom, after our event, you you got 10 or 15 captivated people that are ready to do a business growth or networking uh, situation after, after one of our events. So. You know, there's still nothing like belly-to-belly, face-to-face contact. There's nothing like delivering um, value in person as opposed to over the Internet. Value delivery for a beginning agent. Focus on certainty and growth. These, these agents are uncertain. They want growth. Ask them the question, how can I help develop their habit skills and support their attitude? That's what you need to do. Help them with skill development. These are the agents that you can call and say, I want to help you build your business because they need it. And that's, the, that's, that's where I would be going with them. All right, so we want to constantly train them on the how-tos. We want to get to know the most important person in every LO's life, which is the sales manager. I got, th I got 30, 40 minutes on how to do that. But the bottom line is 
the sales managers of real estate offices are somebody that you need to target and you need to cultivate because they, they're the ones that can really open doors. Do uh, your cost estimate worksheet for every single buyer they have, which again, Mortgage Coach provides. Um, love that service, and you know that's something that these new agents need. Quick turnaround on pre-approvals. Teach them how to prospect for first-time buyers. I'm uh, hosting a first-time home buyer seminar tonight. We got five people. You know what? That's five more buyers than every loan originator has in the city of Indianapolis. It's going to happen at 7:30. We got five buyers captivated, ready to go. And those new agents that we have on my team, they're going to sell hopefully two or three of them. And we're doing one a month. I believe in the first time home buyer seminar. Work FISBOs with them. My God. I mean, for sale by owners, fastest source of business opportunity. Because even if they don't sell, you might be able to refi them. They can refer you people uh, for refis. They can refer real estate agents to you. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. By Owner, I'm curious how many real estate agents have visited you. You know, I encourage you to take their cards, and you can call those agents that visited them and say, hey, I know you're by the Smith's house at 123 Main Street. I mean, there's all kinds of FISBO stuff you can be doing to generate more realtor business. Talk with them about the long term. Or to deliver it, host or sponsor an event. Facilitate a new agent group. Have a monthly meeting on how to generate new business. Possibly you could do this at a GB Unlimited event. Again, if we can get 100 to 200 people at our event together, we can divide this into you know, producers, big producers and new agents, and then you try to captivate those new agents. We're going to get names and emails of everybody in attendance. And then uh, out of the big group at our event, uh, you create these subgroups, and then you work these subgroups for more business. Uh, I can tell you, uh, John Murphy is, again, after, after we do events, he's, he's, he's getting easily six to nine deals after our events. It's, it's stupid. And we're doing them here in Indy. All right, so here's the fact. There are 50 million people between the ages of 18 to 29 years in America. That's a hell of a lot of people. That's a ton. That's a conveyor belt of first-time buyers coming our way. So uh, new and beginning agents, I mean, there is a never-ending source of that first-time home buyer business. There are lower loan amounts, I understand, but there are also customers that are going to be buying four to five homes over the next 20 years and referring you who knows how many. I said I would touch briefly on the diseased agents. The bottom line is, how can I tactfully not do business with them or spend time with this person? Don't attend work events where everybody's drinking because that's where they always are. Tell them their buyers do not qualify. Uh, ask them to come to group training because they never think they need to be trained. Leave them on their own and do not support them. Uh, get in the office early and late because you know what? Bad agents are never there early or late. Only the good ones are. Uh, and ask them to do something that takes hard work. And that would mean ask them to sponsor a GB Unlimited event because they won't do it because it works too hard. So uh, just, you know, I've always been a guy that said this, man, do business with people who like you, trust you, love you, and refer you business. If it doesn't work and you're not feeling it, the way you feel about somebody is the way they feel about you. That's a coin phrase I've got. If you don't like that agent, they don't like you either, so let's not force it, okay? All right, strategy number four is to understand value perceptions, the do's and don'ts of referral business. But unfortunately, guys, I'm out of time. So I'll see you on the next marketing call if Dave likes what he heard and you guys liked what you heard. Uh, in closing, you know what? Your attitude is the key. If you got anything out of today's call, I really hope that you uh, pick up the Yes Attitude book or you pick up any book that can improve your attitude and really analyze, do I have an attractive attitude? Hard work and earning referrals get you through. Delivering value will slam the door shut with all the things I've just talked about. And it will just slam the door shut with just you and the customer in the room. That's what creates loyalty. Loyalty makes a person attractive. Great saying in Proverbs. Yes, it's all about your attitude, baby. I want to thank you for your time. You can like me on Facebook. would love that. Just go to Glenville or GB Unlimited. I have both of them. You can follow me on Twitter, at Mr. G. Bill, where I uh, tweet 
uh, messages of uh, inspiration, leadership, and success. You can always find me on LinkedIn, and if I can ever help any of you uh, with the contacts I have, I would be glad to. You can also find me on YouTube. I have Glenville Training. This is Mr. Bill Sells House's channel, but I am on YouTube. Just type my name in. You can see some of the stuff we do. And the bottom line is if you're interested in doing an event with me and bringing me in, just call me or text me, and I'll be sure to pick it up and uh, talk with you and uh, hopefully grow your business. Uh, you guys, uh, loan originators, you know what? We can't do it without you. And um, you are significant in the success of a real estate agent. And a, there is nothing better, there's nothing better than a quality, sharp loan originator that partners with a real estate agent uh, and explodes their business. They're, you can explode an agent's business simply by being of value and giving service, not by telling them how to do their business, but by, by responding immediately, by doing what you say you're going to do, by not taking loan apps that you know you can't close, by not guessing and shooting straight, and uh, being a real fan of that agent. So um, I appreciate the time, Dave. It was great to be with you guys, and I hope, I hope we got something out of it. Yeah, there's no doubt. Right now, I think if we were in a live audience, it would be standing ovation time, my friend. You you knocked it out of the park. You gave a tremendous amount of advice and value. I hope a lot of people on this call right now, uh, you are reaching out to Glenn to schedule events. We are going to have some time for some Q&A. So, so let's, let's get tactical on a few things. Um, Glenn, I'm going to walk through a few things. I'm going to, again, if you do want to raise your hand and ask Glenn a question, I noticed, actually, I'm going to lower everybody's hand, start raising your hand in five minutes. I'm going to get to you, maybe a little less than that. I, I do want to talk about service. You know, when you showed your slide, um, I don't know how many people noticed this slide um, strategy, it's all about earning business. And earning business, is all about delivering service, and not just what's expected of us, but beyond what's expected of us. So many, you know, you mortgage coach members on this call right now, you know what I'm talking about because you've already, you know, you're on our team, you're executing something beyond the normal experience. But this is what average loan officers are executing in the borrower conversation. And, and Glenn, you showed this in your slide. This is what the average loan officer, you know, this is what the borrower conversation looks like. And I want to make sure all you non-mortgage coach members really understand what an exceptional borrower experience is. What is a total cost analysis? So real quick, I'm just going to run through it uh, in two minutes or less so you understand it, and then we'll get to some Q&A. But first of all, it's got branding. It's got your contact information. It's got a, a nice little button making it easy to call. It's important that it's got the basics, you know, it's got the rate, it's got the payment, it's got the closing cost, that's the important information, the critical information, but it's also easy to drill down into the details of the payment, easy to drill down into the closing costs, easy to actually show the borrower something different, teach them, look, if you paid an extra $100, how much faster would you pay off your mortgage? And again, in today's busy market, you need to be able to do this fast, and that's one of the things that Mortgage Coach, we actually help loan officers that are closing 30 or 40 transactions a month, we help them provide a, a faster quote. Again, it's got to have graphs, show the monthly payment, show the total cost over time. Again, this could be three years. In this situation, it's seven years. Show it over a longer period of time. And at the end of the day, what we're about at Mortgage Coach is all about you know, quality service that exceeds expectations. If you can do that for a borrower, each and every time, and then put your realtor in the loop. Uh, you know, Glenn mentioned yesterday's call with Jeremy Forcier, but Jeremy creates a video over the top of the total cost analysis, something that we make very easy, takes them literally one minute, and now his realtors are exposed to that each and every time. Uh, again, a great strategy. Glenn, you, you saw that call with Jeremy. How would you like it if, you know, more loan officers delivered that kind of value to their borrower and just passively kept you in the loop like that. Uh, I'm, I love it. It's all good. 
Yeah, no, nothing, nothing but pure value in the way that we want to do it. So, I mean, a couple last thoughts before we get into Q&A. If you were a homeowner, what would you rather have? The yellow pad experience, which again, not a problem for collecting information, but what is that borrower walking away from? You know, if you talk to the husband, what's he showing the wife? If you talk to the husband and wife and they come home and now they're talking to that third advisor that you didn't get to present to, what are they showing them? You know, what would you rather have as a borrower? And then, you know, I, I just loved, I mean, I, I was just cracking up when you were doing your, your lame versus great, but it's so true. I want everybody to go and audit your market, your touch points, the emails that you're sending, think about the conversations that you're having, and go, hey, am I, and again, let's, let's replace lame with noise, or am I really delivering something of value? Uh, by the way, Glenn, I sent you an email. I want you to introduce me to the Jeremy who created that valuable video. Uh, I want to actually see that myself. Also, Glenn, if you could post on the Mortgage Coach Facebook page a link to that video and uh, all your contact information. I know you gave it to everybody, but I want to make sure everybody on this call is, you know, no reason they can't get a hold of you. So, you know, just on the Mortgage Coach Facebook page, if you could paste that. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, hey, two quick poll questions before we um, get into the Q&A is, have we convinced you, you know, to actually up your game on the quality of service that you're going to deliver to the borrower? I mean, between my presentation, between, you know, when you think of at the end of the day, Glenn Bill gave a lot of advice. I really like the value add, the different psychologies to reach out to different kinds of realtors. But at the end of the day, if you delivered better service, think about how much better off you'd be, how much more confidence you'd have. So, so by the way, we're at 33% of you have voted. Uh, please, come on, guys, let's at least get it over 50%. Give me a push. And, and, and by the way, I know these, these are not surprising to me. Come on, guys, we're at 45%. Give me 50% vote. Have we convinced you that better service is going to equal more business? So, Glenn, what do you think the results are? What percentage of people voted yes versus no? Uh, 90%. 98%, baby. So, I yeah, so, so some, some good influence there. And one last question. Do you see the value in creating video presentations? So, again, whether it's your presentation to a borrower, uh, I just want to get a feel for how many of you on this call go, yeah, you know what? If I was creating a video like that one that you mentioned about some just general advice, that'd help my business. And hey, if I was actually presenting my, my rate quotes of my proposal, my presentation in a video format, I would get more referrals, I'd earn more business, I'd have more confidence, you know, it would just be better. What percentage of you think that that makes sense? By the way, we're at 48 percent. Come on, give me a push over 50. Uh, so, Glenn, what do you think the, 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 the vote is there for video? 98%. Come on, man. You know it's not 98%. What do you think it is? 90%. Nice. 100%. 93%. So, so, you know, two goals I had was to really evangelize sales and evangelize creating videos, delivering better presentations. For any of you on this call, that want to create a total cost analysis, just give us a call, 1-800-485-7251. 30 minutes, we'll actually create a TCA with you. You'll see how easy it is. You can see how you can do it in one minute. Again, big game changer. So that's our commercial. We are now going to open it up for some Q&A. Again, 1-800-485-7251. And uh, last thoughts, stop selling loans, start delivering wow service. With that said, I'm going to see who we've got here. Uh, Darren Miller, you have been unmuted. Did you have a question or a comment? Darren Miller. Hey, Darren. Darren, you've got one more second. 
All right, whoever's next, speak quickly or we're going to move on. And Rob Klein, you have been unmuted. Did you have a question or a comment? Rob Happy Klein. Work. All right, man. Well, we're off to a slow start. By the way, we just got a whole bunch of hands raised. David we Ashman. David Ashman, you've been unmuted. Did you have a question or a comment? I think we got technical difficulties. I don't know. Uh, Stephen. Stephen Bakke. Or Bachi, you've been unmuted. Question or comment? Stephen. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Bring it. All right, good deal. The uh, persistence part of this is is just huge, and you know the call and what Bill has said today is great. It's awesome. So Thank we re really appreciate these calls. Thank you very much for raising your hand and giving us kudos. We appreciate it. Any questions? Uh, no, not at the moment. That's good. All right, man. Thanks a lot. I'm going to go ahead and put you back on mute. Luke, you have been unmuted. Any questions or comments? Luke. Yes, great call this morning. Thank you, thank you. And, right on. Uh, quick question. Um, you know, these strategies that you presented, what would be the best um, door opener that you could recommend to us? You know, I think, um, I think coming prepared to meet with somebody in person. So what I would suggest is get on LinkedIn, get on Facebook, and read about the agent that you're wanting to open the door with. And, uh, and that's what's really worked with me. I have a son that wrestles in Division I. And um, I had a mortgage guy reach out to me and say, hey, I saw that your son wrestled at Central Michigan. I uh, you know, have always been interested in wrestling. Well, look at I'm really proud of my kids. Most big producers are. You see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. And immediately, he didn't come to me at all talking about business. He came talking about what means the most to me. So when, I, when we talk about uh, door openers, I think the door opener isn't about rates, programs, and the mortgage business. It's about doing the back research on the agent so you got something personally shared and in common with them, and then uh, as you see them at you know my bo at, at at board events or golf outings or even milling around the office, you have something that that you know about them that they're going to want to talk to you about. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, you know, one thing is a lot of times though, you know, four or five years ago we could have a half a dozen agents and and everybody was happy. Now, you know, it seems like the age has changed. It's like they may be busy the first half of the year and then the second half of the year they just drop off and vice versa. You know, it's um, <laughs> real estate agents are a very inconsistent group of people. And so, uh, you know, my strategy obviously uh, to help you is to get, you know, as many on, on your board as possible. So when the dips go for the one agent, the, the peaks go for the next agent. And I just think it's a numbers thing, but I think you've got to understand, you know, just like I said, a lot of real estate agents are not successful. And uh, when, they close five, when they close five deals in a month, it's not uncommon that they don't work for 40 days. Uh, and it's also not uncommon if they don't close a deal that they go in the tubes and they don't, you know, they don't, they don't come out of it. So... Uh, all I could say with you, the only consistency that you're going to bring is to consistently uh, replenish your stock of real estate agents and to continue to be persistent and uh, adding realtors to your sphere of influence, if you will, or uh, you know, to your education and entertainment piece of uh, getting realtor business. Thank you. Hey, Luke, thank you for participating. And again, remember, focus on the realtors that are doing the most business. So, by the way, I wanted to make sure it's okay, Glenn. We've got a lot of people that have raised their hands. Do you mind taking a few more minutes and answering a few more questions? I know we're a little over time. Is that a, can you do that, Glenn? Oh, absolutely. I'm honored to. Absolutely. If I can help, I'm here to help. All right, great. Charlene Crowell, you have been uh, unmuted. Did you have a question or a comment? Charlene. All right. 
David Ashman, we're going to give you another shot. Uh, I'm going to unmute you in a second. Greg Roberts, you're next. Be ready. Dave Ashman, you've been unmuted. Okay, Dave, you don't get another chance. And Greg Roberts, you've been unmuted. Greg Roberts. Boy. A or something. I don't know. This is unusual. Julie. Julie Webb, you've been unmuted. Julie. Hi, Dave and Glenn. Thank you so much. This has been just awesome. My question Thanks. is, I use the Mortgage Coach I have for years, and I do a video presentation. However, I've had realtors actually say, don't send me that. I don't understand it. You're confusing me and the client. What would you say in a case like that? I would say, okay. That's, Just that's okay. I, <laughs> don't, hey, don't, if they don't want it and they're getting confused, don't send it. That, that's fine. Uh, thank you for your feedback, and I won't send you any more videos. Thanks for your business. I just feel yeah. like they're missing out the point, though, and but I understand. Yeah, I did. So yeah, thanks. well, and, and, and Julie, do me a favor. Would you send me one of yours to David sure. Mortgage Coach? Because there's no doubt too much information is just as bad as too little information. So my guess is either one, you might be providing a little too much information, in that okay. and and not focusing on you know the real high level issues and two you may not have pre-framed what you're doing to the realtor in a way okay. that they get it so so okay. let's look at your you know send it to me and I will sure. watch it and I will give you feedback okay I appreciate that we'll do thank you no, no problem Julie hey thanks for raising your hand participating okay. and reaching out Rick Cardinelli the man the myth the legend you are up to bat. Rick, what do you have to say? This is crazy. This is two, so it's two days in a row I'm on these calls. This is amazing. Um, <clears throat> here's the question I had earlier. He mentioned what I run into a lot in my marketplace are agents, realtors, that do have an objection that is sometimes difficult to overcome, that they work with maybe one or two loan originators that actually feed them a tremendous amount of business. Now, you had indicated, well, I don't want business. Or, so you mean to tell me that if a loan originator referred you, and it's an obligation close more or less, if I'm referring you a lot of business on a consistent basis, you wouldn't take that? Or that you wouldn't feel obligated to recommend my services? Right. Um, yeah. I. I will rephrase that. What I said is I don't do business on contingencies. So in other words, even when customers tell me, hey, Glenn, uh, you know, I'll let you list my home if you can get me this or get me that, or I have, eight, I have a lot of customers that will say, hey, Glenn, I got three homes I need to sell, and I want you to cut my fee. And, and so uh, it would be the same thing as a loan originator saying, I'm going to get you business. Well, the only way you're – the only way that um, you're going to sell me a home, this was, this was the deal. We're working with a young gal whose husband is a loan originator. So that young gal was coming to our first-time homebuyer seminar tonight, and she said, the only way you're going to sell me a home is if you give my husband business. And so my instruction was, uh, you know what, we don't do business based on contingency. I'm either good enough to do business with you and stand alone just like you should be good enough to do business with me. To answer your question, absolutely I would feel obligated to give you business if you gave me business. There's no question about it. Uh, but to go and approach a real estate agent saying, hey, I'm going to give you business so you give me business, um, weak agents will bite on that one, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure top producers will. I so, like the contingency. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question or not. No, it does. No, and more or less what I was looking at in the rebuttal of I don't do business on contingency. So that's that's great. That's all I needed. That's absolutely fantastic. Dave, another winner of a call. Thank you very much. Hey, Rick. Hey, Rick. Thank you. And, and just to add to that, you know, I know how real estate agents are. And, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. It upsets me. You know, if, if, a, if, if a loan guy is asking for business and L.O. is saying, hey, uh, you know, if, if a real estate agent were to say 
to a loan guy, uh, hey, you refer me two deals and I'll get you loans, trust me, they never will. And so, you know, just flip that one backwards. How many LOs on this call have heard an agent say, give me a couple deals and I'll get you a couple loans? The bottom line is it's BS. They never give it to them. So that, that's really what I'm getting at, too, on the flip side. Hey, thank you, Rick. Great question. Uh, Bob Klein, you've been unmuted. Bob Klein. All right, we're getting through these. We've only got a few more, but I want to make sure everybody who really has a question is here. Steve Bocci? I uh, finally got a question here for you. Um, as far as um, getting, you know, knowing who the top agents are, where can you get this information? Is there some kind of uh, local databases for each region? Uh, the first thing I would do would be go to the Board of Realtors and see if the local board, see if they would uh, be willing to give that up. A lot of times they, they will. Um, a lot of times you're, if there's like an uh, IBJ, uh, that would be a good way to do it. Um, the other thing I would do would be look at who is advertising in print. Um, that would be a good way to find them. Another way would be to drive a service area and see who's got the most signs out. Um, that, that would be four ways I would find who the top agents are. But usually, uh, the Board of Realtors in that area, if you said, you know, I'm interested, I'm not encouraging to be unethical or immoral, but if you said, hey, look, and I'm looking to find a top agent, you know, to do business with as a buyer or seller, a lot of times they'll, they'll refer you. Or the other thing you can do is, um, you know, call the sales managers and take a poll uh, or hire somebody to call each office and say, you know, I'm taking a poll on real estate agents. Uh, could you please identify for me the, uh, four the four top agents in your office? You'd be amazed. Hell, they'll tell you. And what their production is and how many sides they have. Uh, and just act like you're taking a survey or a poll. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You got it. Hey, Stephen, great question. Uh, by the way, I want to reach out. There's still hundreds of people on this call. If you have, uh, you know, successfully identified and tracked top agents, you know, built a list of top 50 or 100, please go to the Mortgage Coach Facebook page and list the sources that you're using. Uh, and also, if we, we, you know, someone wants to raise a hand, if you have a tactic or strategy that's been useful for you, let us know. But my answer is, when there is a will, there is a way. And if you just start calling and researching, talk to your title rep. You know, you've got to have at least one realtor buddy, uh, one realtor that's really close with that, heck, just one realtor who knows the market really well could fill out half that list. If you just took him out to lunch and got out your pad and said, hey, who are all the best agents you know and respect? So there's a way to get it done. Uh, again, community, uh, I call on you to help share all the different ways. Uh, and, and Glenn, obviously, thank you for your answers. Craig, you've been unmuted. Did you have a question or a comment? Craig, one more second. Yes. yes. Can you hear me? We hear you. Oh, great. We're having a hard time hearing you, Craig. Uh, speak up. Okay. Oh, Craig, I'm real sorry. When you first talk, we can hear you, but then when you go to answer your question, we're not hearing you. Okay, I'll try again. Okay. <laughs> hey, Glenn, is it just me, or are you hearing what he's saying? Hey, Glenn, hey, Craig, I put you back on mute. I'm going to come back to you at the end, uh, but we're not hearing you. Hey, Jonathan, by the way, everybody, Jonathan is one of the top uh, creators of Total Cost Analysis. Jonathan, you've been unmuted. By the way, how many TCAs have you created, Jonathan? Uh, I think I'm close to about 1,000. So, so obviously a very passionate user of Mortgage Coach and Edge. Uh, what is your question, my friend? I got a question. Uh, so I have several years of past experience as a successful realtor. And I'm wondering, Glenn, how much of that uh, experience would you let you know the realtors know about uh, without feeling like you're stepping on their toes? Oh, I think it's I think it's a tremendous value personally. 
Um, I think um, it's how you frame it. But the bottom line is if, if you've been a real estate agent, and uh, I can tell you this, <laughs> I like the idea of somebody that's been a real estate agent to be my mortgage originator, my loan originator. So um, to me, I think, you know, if you, um, if you take it from the framework of empathy, if you can create a presentation or a dialogue, if you will, that focuses on the challenges uh, that you experienced and you're able to relate uh, how you can help solve those challenges, I think, I think you become extremely valuable. Um, does that help or does that answer your question? Yeah, that works. I think that answers it. Great. Hey, hey, Jonathan, thank you for being such a such a leader in our community and great question. Thank you very much. You got it. Thanks, Dave. Take care, man. Stuart, uh, you have yes. been unmuted. Are you there? Can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly, Stuart. Thank you. Well, Craig, you're I, want to thank, I want to thank you for the information. I had it answered earlier. It was about yeah. how to target the new uh, target new uh, agents. Okay, great. So I'll, I'll look on Facebook. Thank you so much, though. Yeah, and Stuart, you know, I, are you a mortgage coach member? Uh, yep, just started about a week and a half ago. Okay, fantastic. I, I've heard that question a lot of times, so I'm actually gonna. I don't know that I'm gonna dedicate a whole Tuesday coaching call to it, but I am. I'm gonna, you know, one, do some research, and two. Uh, do some preparation and answer that in an upcoming coaching call also because it's come up so often and I really want to make sure I nail it for you guys. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, take care. Have a wonderful day. All right. We've got our last hand in Craig. I'm going to give you another chance. You had a question or a comment? Yeah, earlier. Um... <laughs> Oh, Craig, I am so sorry. I'm sure this is some technology issue. Uh, but I, first of all, Glenn, could you hear anything he said? I couldn't. I could not at all. Okay, so hey, here's the deal, Craig. I, Larry just raised his hand. If you type in your question into the question section, I'll try to bring it into the conversation, okay. but we're going to have to wrap this up. And okay, I'm so thanks. sorry we're not hearing you. That's okay. Okay. All right, Craig, so put it, put it in there. Hey, Larry, you've been unmuted. Did hey, you have a did question, you or a question or a comment? comment? Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, I had a question. Yesterday you said, um, great call, by the way, but yesterday, just in the call, you said that you had a uh, another call with yesterday with Jeremy. Uh, first, is that, is that recorded and on... MortgageCoach.com. Yeah, that is yeah, that, that is, is that is recorded. recorded. Go to MortgageCoach.com, log, log in, and then and go to coaching calls and you'll see it. Okay. And yeah, I want to uh, congratulate you on a great call. I got a lot of good takeaways. I got my notepad out, and I'm going to put some of these uh, these practice these things that I heard into practice. Right on. Right Thank on. you for being an active member. Thank you. Take care. All right, so hey, I, I, I'm reading Craig's message right now. I'm going to read it out loud, and this is our last question, and we're going to wrap up today's call. You mentioned that your loan programs don't make you attractive, but you also mentioned that you would like to see a 21-day loan approval. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, so many times when I speak with loan originators, they want to say, hey, we got this new great loan program, and then they roll it out. And all I would say is the presentation of the loan program should come from the position of, in other words, saying we got a great loan program called uh, PMI Upfront, okay, and then ending the conversation. The presentation skill should be, Glenn, have you ever had a buyer that cannot qualify for a home because of PMI? Or, Glenn, have you ever uh, had an issue selling a buyer because they don't want PMI. You know, I have a solution, and that is to have the seller pay upfront PMI. So uh, the, the point is, is uh, how loan originators present things to agents about their programs, I think they can do a better job in presenting not what they are, but how they help 
sell more homes. And I think that creates real loyalty and adds real value. Um, hopefully that answers the question. So, so first of all, everybody on the call, I don't care who you are, re-listen to the way Glenn just answered that. I mean, that is, that was a nugget. I mean, there's a lot of nuggets of value, but we, we do as an industry tend to either, you know, talk about how great our rates are, talk about how good our programs are, talk about our, you know, how fast we can get things done, uh, but we don't, well, I, I can't say it any more eloquent than, than Glenn did. If that didn't really connect with you, um, you know, re-listen to that. And more importantly than that, write it down and then reflect at the end of every day, at the end of every conversation with a realtor or a borrower, did I just sell product or did I solve problems and sell solutions? You know, ask yourself that over the next couple of weeks after every conversation. And I think just that alone makes this hour and a half really valuable. So, so Glenn, you're, you're a rock star. You're in the Mortgage Coach Hall of Fame now. This is a great call. Really well, appreciate thanks. you taking extra time to add value. Uh, for anybody who's still on this call that's a non-Mortgage Coach member, come on, guys. Get on the team. You got the number below. Give us a call. Uh, go to the Mortgage Coach Facebook page for some follow-up value on the call. Also, contact information on uh, you know, Glenn Bill, so you can reach out to him, form a relationship with him, you know, be on his mailing list. The guy is a you know, big-time stud. With that That's said, it. any last words, Glenn? Uh, no, I just want to, again, thank all that, that have listened. I hope that um, I've helped create your realtor relationships uh, to become more effective, more profitable, and I hope that uh, you will leverage uh, some of what I've said. But most of all, uh, I just want to wish you a happy and fulfilling career and, and loan origination. And if you like what you heard, consider having me to your town for an event. And most of all, tell the owners of your company this guy needs to come and speak to us at our uh, national meetings or our annual meetings. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much. You've been great. Uh, last survey question, if people could fill it out on the way out, is, you know, what did you think of today's call? Was it good, great, average, uh, so on? So please give us your feedback. We do appreciate it, and we're always working to deliver valuable content, ideas, and strategies that are relevant in today's market. Have a great day, great week. See you, everybody.